Give us a wave, Lee. Oh, <laughs> Have you enjoyed it today, Lee? Yeah, lovely, mate. <laughs> Apart from this, every, uh, I don't know, half hour or so. Nice, though. Nice fishing, anyway. <laughs> Right, so today we've brought you to what is quite a unique venue in some respects. It's basically two miles of a landlocked canal called the Moira Canal uh, near Ashby. And it's um, basically unique in the way that it's, you know, got not got the usual boat traffic. The area we've come to today is like a big basin at one end, and then it goes all, winds through all the countryside and like all the way up to the other end where there's another basin. Very weedy. There's a lot of fish in here as well. But it's uh, today we basically we're going to be trying to tackle how to overcome like weed problems, how to catch the fish. You know, um, we're going to be targeting roach, rudd, um, small skimmers, maybe some bigger skimmers on our tench if we're lucky on our big perch. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. But um, I'm actually looking forward to getting uh, fishing because there's quite a lot of like rudd and stuff topping at the minute. So hopefully. Uh, we can put a good bag of fish together for you all and um, show you how to fish a weedy venue. Just going to run through um, the bait selection that we've brought with us today. Um, we've got some gram bait here uh, that mixed up this morning before it came. That's to be like introduced at the start. We've got the same gram bait that like slopped up a bit wetter. That I will explain about uh, in a short while. We've also bought some maggots with us. Uh, these are just dead maggots, mainly for like bigger fish, skimmers, um, perch, you know, um, that sort of thing, etc. Uh, for the smaller fish, I've got some pinkies, staple small fish bait, really, to be honest. And I've also got some extremely small uh, squats. Um, not the best, but what I've had left over from the weekend. And they're really good holding bait squats are, so I tend to like, I can, I can add them to my ground bait and things like that. I've also got some casters here. Um, if small fish become a nuisance, then I can put casters in with my worms. And my worms here, like that. So I've got some dendies, um, pots in there just to chop them as I need them. And most importantly, because I want to try and be feeding a bit of ground bait today, uh, I've got some water next to my ground baits and I can just like keep my hand clean, dry it on a towel then. And that is pretty much it. Everything else is tanned. My gra I've got more ground bait down there in my tub. So we've just got two lines, uh, one for small fish, short, um, and another one for targeting slightly bigger fish with like worms and things. And we'll see uh, how we get on. Can't wait to be honest. I know there's some fish in this venue. It's, it's fairly prolific, to be honest. It's quite good. So I don't actually need to feed a, a massive amount of bait to get fish in my pegger because they're pretty much always going to be there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop a small palm full of squats in my tub, along with a few dead maggots. Literally, there's probably, well, a few more, but there's probably 25, 30 maggots there. And then one, two, and I spotted half a handful. So I'm just going to like literally mix that round in this tub. Like I've said, I, I don't need masses of bait because I'm not 
I, I don't need to like draw loads and loads and loads of fish in. I'm probably going to be doing that as the day goes on type of thing. So this is quite a soft ground bait that I'm using. It's soft, but I've mixed it. It's slightly on the damp side, but not. it's not overly damp. So what I want it to do is get down, but start breaking up as it's going down through the water column. There'll be some little bits that ping off it um, that will be good for, you know, getting the fish to come up to catch them quicker. It's a weedy venue, like I've explained already. So this is going to um, help us to establish a better, a better catching routine. If I can catch these fish off the bottom, try and bring them up in the water later. But this is just to literally get my peg kicked off. So fishing quite short. And I'm literally just potting. You see, like that ball, it's, you can, I don't know if you can pick that up on a camera, but there's like bits pinging off already. You can probably see it. It's like pinging up. It's really good. You, it's like just a little bit of attraction. It's like, it's almost like a little bit of a taster. And I'm going to give it one more ball. So just one, one little squeeze soft. That's it. That's it. L literally, don't need to do much more than that. And then what I do like to do sometimes is just add a tiny bit of loose to it. So I've not even fed all of that. Look, it's just I've put like two and a half handfuls in there, but it's give us plenty to play with later on if should we need to. Same place again. I've got a little bit of tape on my pole, find a little hole in the weed there. We'll go in again. And just take your time. That little bit of loose, that'll cloud up through the water column and that'll that will draw fish from in and around the weed that are in the weed because the, that's where they'll be. And I do this quite a lot when I start fishing, uh, like whether I'm fishing long or short, I'll literally throw my bait. Like I, I sort of like get my range and I, I do the same thing with a catapult while my pole pot's there so that I know how far to judge to ha how to feed it type of thing. This is quite easy today because we're literally just gonna be flicking pinkies there and probably a little bit later, a bit of soft ground bait. So I'm just gonna feed me the other line now. So we've got some worms here. So it's probably 25, 30, 30 worms, some, something like that. Dendrobenus. Just gonna add a, a little pinch of dead maggot to that. Okay, because I, I like to chop an odd dead maggot, not loads, but, and then I'm gonna give it a few snips. Got a triple bladed scissors on, but I don't want my worms really small i want them like fairly chunky so i don't know if you pick that up on there but these are quite quite a good size you know what i mean they, they, i've not like overly snipped them and this is what i'm going to put in and start so like add some more dead maggots to that i've not overly snipped these simply because i want to target a better fish like i, I want there's a lot of rudding things in here and I don't really want to be catching them fishing this way. So I can catch them more efficiently fishing on like pinkies and things and whatnot. So all this is for is literally to target bigger fish. And then maggots, I know, and casters are the same. They will sit on the bottom along with the attraction of the worms, like the acids coming off the worms. And it's like, it's literally a perfect big fish bait. So I'm going to get them in that. And I've got quite a bit of explained already. It's really weedy here. So um, usually I would go out long, but I've had to try and find some holes to fish in the weed. So I've got like one there where I'm fishing from a sh uh, short line from a small fish. And then I've got one in line with like the dark marker of a tree there. So I've got another little hole there, taped it again on my pole. So I know exactly where to put my rig. And I'm literally, just pop that in there like that. And that'll go down, it'll spread out a little bit, but there's always gonna be big bits of bait there and it's really good for like holding bigger fish in. Small fish are a particular problem on that line. I'm gonna cut the uh, maggots out and just feed the casters instead with it and try going down that route. But I feel like that the maggots be a better response at this time of year because it's quite a tricky time of year this the weather's really changeable and it's probably going to help me 
get off to a better start by feeding maggots with it. But we'll see how that pans out. So I'm going to start fishing that. Hopefully we'll be straight into a few. Right, so just going to start the session now on a single maggot. Fairly positive rig, to be honest. I will explain more about rigs in detail in a bit. But starting at full depth, just get the elastic uh, working and see what response we get. So I'm literally got my bolt straight down like that through that weed, through any weed that's there. And there's a old up bite already. Lovely little rud. Show the camera that one. Obviously, the rig didn't even settle there. That rud's got the bait. It's virtually down its throat. I mean, I wasn't slow on picking up on the bite, I don't think, but the camera might show that differently. <laughs> um, but already now, I'm thinking the fish want to be off the bottom. Like, I've literally just started, but already I'm thinking that that might be the case. And I can get them to come up quite quickly. Not, I'm not gonna like push it to begin with. We'll just see what response we get. See, that got to the bottom then, but I've got nice positive rig on here, really, to be honest. It's a nice swing him, just about. It's a nice hybrid there, look. Beautiful fish, absolutely gorgeous. Straight in the top lip. So again, like I said, I've got a, a nice positive rig on here. It's a 0 0.5, which is quite, it's quite, quite, uh, quite positive for the depth of water we're fishing in. But I need to try and make sure my bait gets down. It's like really important. Um, and I can, with a pencil float especially, I can follow it down. Well, I'll have that on the drop then. Another little golden rod, beautiful fish. Like, start by starting on the deck, you can judge whereabouts the fish will want to be in the water. So, literally got my bulk there, and I'm going to lower it straight down with it, like that. Yeah, see, so the, already, them fish, are like, they, they want to be off the bottom getting hold ups on the rig. So, want to try and give it a little bit of time to get them to come up confidently, if possible. But again, we'll just see how that goes on, because that, that is not even going to, no. We are, uh, they are already there in mass, I think, by the look of this. Single dead maggot, not doing anything overcomplicated. Get my bulk and literally just let it zip through the water. That's that's what I want it to do. So yeah, potentially could have caught on a bit of weed there. Or it's just a fish got it in its mouth. Little roach. Here we got roach now, and that one to pick it up on a camera, it's hooked in the bottom of its lip. So that is telling me that that fish are off the bottom. It's gone down, picked my bait up and come back up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna try, and I'm just immediately gonna take about 10, it's probably 10 inches there, off the depth. Still with the positive rig. Uh, I've got a shallow rig set up, but I'm just gonna, um, see what response to get off that. Just loose feed a few pinkies. Rig in the water again. So that was that was even shallower that one. It's a smaller fish though so not always the best sign. See your better fish could be like sitting below everything else that's there. Just not going to feed this time, I'm just going to 
lower that rig down. Come up again. Yeah, see the ever so slightly smaller fish then. And obviously if we was like in a match, I'd be thinking, well, I don't really want that, you know what I mean? It's not not ideal. But give it a couple of goes and sort of stick with it. This wind's gone like really sideways on as well now. It's making presentation difficult. These fish are already up in the water. There's a lot of them up there. fishing probably an hour or so now um, through a bit of let's say testing conditions We've got an horrible side wind and it keeps trying to rain it's just absolutely hammered it down for a good 10-15 minutes but we are still catching plenty of fish which is a good thing loads of rud shallow we've got an odd like hybrid and perching amongst them, roach. So the fishing's actually really, really nice. Just to explain a little bit about what I've done and how I've changed things again. So I'm feeding a, kind of a sloppy ground bait. I've, I've actually just made it a little bit stiffer to get it a bit further down in the water column. Um, and then what I've done, I've put, put a shallow rig on um, that I've had set up already. And this is just like a, a point two with a bulk. I've got a four inch hook length on here and I've put a 14 on, this is 2010. And then I'm just threading a maggot on it like that. But what I'm finding is because it's actually quite clear, the fish, although they're shallow, shallow and you can catch them shallow, there's sort of, um, if I fish too far up in the water for them, I actually get less bites and I catch smaller fish. So what I'm doing is I'm actually fishing a little bit deeper than where I think they're sat. And it seems to be working really well, to be honest. I'm, I'm having to, you know, use a disgorger on an odd one and little things like that. But it's, it just seems like that is the best way to catch them. They're sort of like a little bit too scared to come right up and inter intercept it right near the surface. Bait on it. Um, I'm also loose feeding a few pinkies every now and then, just to like get something down towards the bottom because I think a lot of it's just getting eaten. Because um, it might be that this might not last forever. I could potentially you know, in a, in a few hours time of like exhausted all this, all the shallow fish. And then I kind of want to put a little bit of bait on the bottom as well. Um, Cause you can sometimes find that the better fish will sit, oops, that was a better one. Um, the better fish will sit underneath all of them smaller fish that are near the top. So it's about like sort of using it two lines as one almost. Better fish that one. There's some lovely fish though, it's really, really nice fishing this. It really is. So just to um like highlight another point, and the I suppose the keen-eyed among you might have already figured it out. What I'm actually doing is so from where I've sort of started and started on the bottom. Now shallowed up, I've took a section off and I'm fishing a short line rig and flicking it out slightly past my tip. Now, there are, you know, people will probably say, why aren't you fishing a whip? Um, and 
one, yes, a whip would be good, but certainly not on a day like today. I've got a, a wind coming across me. It would make your presentation suffer immensely. And you will find uh, like this a lot, but a short line will outscore and outperform a whip quite often. I think the fish actually have to be really small for a whip to be a better option sometimes. So I've just got like, literally, I'm, I'm not breaking anything down. I've got the same section of pole, ship back. I've got a, a five slag in there and it's just sort of perfect for all these different size fish I'm catching. The rudder like probably ounce and a half to two ounce. Odd, odd bigger one, odd roach. And there's a roach, an hour actually. Wind just took that. Um, but I'm catching a, an odd small one still as well. And obviously if this was a match, you need to make everything count. So it's just about trying to get the best out of your your chosen day because it's you know even if you're pleasure fishing it's still nice to catch the most amount of fish you know catching a fish every chuck is great but certainly if you give this a little go like you're fishing a shorter line and fishing so that you're not breaking down it's certainly worth worth doing I've also like kept that worm line primed up as well. And I'm actually dying to have a go on that because I think we could potentially catch some bigger fish there. And I'm not loose feeding any, any bait over that. I've literally just cooked in two lots of bait, nice big segments of worms. Um, and hopefully we'll catch some bigger fish there, but we will see. We'll see, it could be that there's just too many small fish about. Although I'm catching loads of fish on that other line, it's really important to keep your other uh, areas going as well. And obviously I've kept it nice and simple today. So I've just snipped some more worms up there. A few dead maggots in it. So it's important to just keep putting a bit in, especially when there's a lot of fish there. It's re really important. So I'm just going to uh, pop some in there nice and slow and like I said before the nice like big chunks of worm odd maggot in there it's going to get down sit on the bottom and hopefully that's where we're going to catch some bigger fish later on little pause in the fishing um, just going to run you through the rigs that I've been using and the wires and whatnots of, of why I'm using them to be honest, dead simple. Um, first one, we've got, um, so I've got in there six elastic, got 011 mainline. Uh, so this is my deck rig for fishing, like where I'm fishing my ground bait and my pinkies. Um, so 0.5 float, slim line float, because if I need to fish near the deck, I can get it and just hold onto the bulk and get it straight down without it like really catching on any weed. It's quite important, that, that thing. So always like have, if you're fishing in a weedy venue, have a slightly heavier rig that you can bomb down to them. I mean, this is good anyway, because there's a lot of fish here and you know, we're having a good day. So anyways, 0.5 float um, on the main line. And then I've just bulked all the shot above the hook length. Got a 16 chuck length there. Uh, and that's down to an 18 hook stepped up to 010 now but starting off with we started on 08 so that's the first one next up for exactly the same line is a shallow rig so that is um very windy <laughs> so that is um a point two this is on a five elastic so you're catching up in the water you don't want them splashing about on the top um shorter line to the float it's still got a fair fair amount of length of line there um, just so I can flick it out past the pole tip that sort of thing um, 
More importantly on this one, I've got a wire stem, so it like cocks straight away, it's fishing straight away. Um, again, really quite important when you're fishing shallow like this. Uh, you want something that's like going to show you bites instantly. Um, in fact, the, the main line is actually a li little bit more durable on this. So I've got 014 main line on this one, simply because of the fact I'm going to be catching more fish on it. And I feel as though a stiffer line, like a heavier main line, is better when you're fishing shallow and catching shallow. It seems to like go through the water better. Um, and you get less tangles and things like that with it. So again, simple, uh, a bulk. I started on a six inch hook length with this one. I've actually gone to a four inch now, and this is 010 and I've got a 14 hook on there where I'm threading a maggot because the fishing is really prolific so I can get away with doing it. Uh, and then lastly, I've got uh, a big fish rig. So we've got 10 to 12 slicks in here, the red one. So got, on this one, I've got 014 mainline, 0.6 float, wire stem, nice bristle, something that you're going to, you know, it's going to sit nicely. Uh, again, it's quite heavy for the depth of water. We've only got like five foot, but you want to make sure that your bait is near the bottom. And especially with this and the fish I'm going to be targeting with this rig, um, it's really important to know that your bait is on the deck and it's not caught up on a bit of weed somewhere or, or whatever. So. Uh, with this, again, I've got a bulk, and then below it, I've actually got two droppers at the minute, but I think before I start fishing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bulk those two together and put them just above uh, my hook length here. Um, my hook length is 011, and that's down to, uh, yeah, it is a 14 hook, that one again, with a barb on it. Okay, so that's my three rigs, and I've got a shallow, a full depth rig, and a big fish worm rig. And that is it, it's that simple. Have a look on the worm line. And I've not even touched this yet. I've just like carefully fed it. So I'm hoping that there's gonna be some fish there. Because there's a lot of a lot of fish about, a lot of rolled up in the water and stuff. I'm just going to go straight in with a full dendy on, and hopefully it's going to sink away and we're going to get a, a fish. I've just got to like double bulk my shot down, go really positive, just get that elastic right. Got a nice pingy slick in there, and let's see if we can attach ourselves to something larger. Literally, just lower it straight in like that so i'm just straight down to me oh we've got a little bite there let's leave him a sec oh how did we even miss that come on lee left that one as well so again straight down trying not to let it catch on any weed i think that's probably caught on weed there look so let's just take it out try again Straight down with that bulk. That's that's the place there. That seems to be the bit. But it could also be fish. See, see how my float's moving there? That is probably, there's like a little rudder or something on that. Might be a perch. Probably a perch. Nope, it's a rudd. Just shows you, it's a nice fish. You can probably see them like fishing at quite an extreme angle here because um, it's just like literally there's weed everywhere and it's really hard to find a hole. But I've, I thought I found a little bit of a hole there. There we go. Another one. Probably fish holding it up to be honest. There's that many in here. Nice chunky little perch. Discord you're on him. Up him in the net. Worm's all good, so straight back on again. Check that elastic. See, I like my elastic quite, quite tight, especially the slick when you're doing this sort of fishing because you need to really, really set that hook. So you could probably pick that up on the camera there. There's like, that's probably caught on weed again there. So 
I'm just going to move it. See, see, there's a bit of weed on it. It's really hard to see actually because the because of the wind, the reflection on the water. But there is a little spot that I know I can get my rig through. See that that's gone through there. You see, already gone. Oh, fast bite. Though, that one. It's probably a rud. It's good. There's fish down there, so something happening. Had a quick go on the chop worm a few times and I've caught some like chunky rod and perch on it but I've not caught any of this sort of expected big fish um, that I thought we might get. Though I have refed it again a few more times and I will try it again a little bit later on. What I have done and what I have noticed while I've been fishing from a small fish, every, every now and then, I'd catch an odd decent one and I felt like there was some better fish in my peg. So what I've done I've no and what I've noticed is it's quite hard to tell with when this like uh, shimmer on the water that we've got today. But what's happening is, is that when I'm feeding my ground bait and some and my pinkies, there's a little bit, a little bit of toe on it, and it's it's just drifting the bait down ever so slightly. And so what I've been doing is I've been like sort of catching in my main feed for a little while. And then every now and then I'll like flick it to the right, like I've done now. And I've caught like, I've had, well, I've had a bream doing it, probably two and a half pound. I've caught a nice rod, some other like chunky fish as well. And it doesn't always work, but I've caught some bonus fish by doing it. And it's like just those small little things. Um, that are obviously, you know, the key to like maximizing your peg's potential. I've tried on the deck over the top of this. I did catch a skimmer when I did it, but it was just seemed to be on its own. Um, Cause I've tried forcing the fish down as well. and Not really worked. They kind of just want to be off the bottom on top of the weed. So it just shows you that you don't always have to fish on the bottom. Just a threaded maggot on a size 14 hook is like by far and away the best and most efficient bait. The fish don't really seem to care what what bait you're using on the hook really to be honest. So it's about getting the, the best out of it. I've caught the bream on it or the big rod and the, they've all had the like a go on the same thing. Uh, I've caught some nice little skimmers and odd roach. It's going well. 10, maybe more sometimes off, off of each bait before it's like absolutely completely ragged and it's gone clear and there's no juice left in it, so to speak. So I can feel now I'm back of my neck and I'm looking up. It looks like there's another load of rain coming, which is great, can't wait. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a quick go on my big fish line and um, see if I can put one or two more better quality fish together and then have a look at what we've caught after that and wrap the day up. So we're going to wrap it up today because um, we've got thunder rolling in the distance and just a nice chunky roach there. So I'm going to call that the last fish of the day. So I'm going to head back to the van now because um, there's a load of thunder and lightning in the distance and um, it'll be an ideal time to call it a day I reckon before I get super wet. Right so as you can see we've had an absolutely cracking day here. Got loads of rud, uh, little skimmers and roach, shallow, a few nice bigger fish and perch, and um, all round of it just had a cracking day to be honest. Uh, that bream rounded it off really nice to be fair. So, gonna get these back and um, see you on the next one.